What's up, guys? It's Chris. Here to give my quick predictions for UFC Fight Night 21 coming on Wednesday. Leading into the new season of the Ultimate Fighter with Chuck and Tito as the coaches. Um, I'm kind of looking forward to it. I always watch, like to watch this Ultimate Fighter. I know some fans think that the premise has gotten old, stale, you know, but it's a good show to me because every year you got a new cast of characters and it's free fights on TV. Plus, you know, there's rumors of Tito possibly falling off the show late. I don't know. So I'm kind of intrigued to see what's going to happen with that angle. Moving on, though, to the card itself. I'm um, just going to run over the undercard real, real quick. I got Gerald Harris by unanimous decision over Mario Miranda. I have Jason Hyde by unanimous decision over Charlie Brenneman. I got Hannes Torres by submission over Jacob Volkman. Gleason Tabao by unanimous decision over Kao Uno. Yushin Okami by unanimous decision over Lucio Linares. Nick Lentz by unanimous decision over Robert Emerson. That's a lot of unanimous decisions. Hopefully it doesn't go that way. We're not going to see those fights anyway, but still. Um, and Andre Winner by TKO over Rafaelo Oliveira. On to the televised portion of the card. First up, we got Ross Pearson against Dennis Seaver. Pearson was one of the winners of uh, the U.S. versus U.K. Ultimate Fighter season. Um, he had the last fight, I believe, over Aaron Riley. Kicked Aaron Riley's butt. Dennis Seaver... He's actually looked pretty good lately. He's got this devastating spinning back kick he's been uh, landing. Took his last opponent out with it. Just an awesome move. I mean, to beat a guy basically with the spinning back kick is pretty damn impressive. This should be a good way to lead off the event. Um, should be an entertaining fight. Pretty much just a stand and trade slug fest. Um, you know, it's pretty evenly matched, but I got a favor of Pearson because I've said it before on some of my videos in the past. The UFC, they match up guys somewhat favorably. You know, who they want to win, they kind of put them in favorable matchups. And they always do that with guys that have won the Ultimate Fighter. It doesn't always work out, but that's the way it is. Fights aren't fixed in any way, but they just match up guys that they want to win against an opponent they think they could beat. That's the case here. Seaver's a pretty stiff challenge, though. Him and Pearson are pretty much similar fighters. I think the difference here is Seaver throws a lot of really big winging punches. I think Pearson's technique's a little bit sharper on the feet. Both are tough as hell. But I think that um, Seaver is going to be winging those punches. And I just think that it's gonna he's going to wear out later. I think he's going to get tired later. Um, I think it'll probably make it to the third round. But I think Seaver's going to, like I said, he's going to take it out of him. Throwing all those big punches if he misses any. Along with the punishment he's going to take in between. And I think uh, Ross is going to take him out late. So I see a third round TKO win for Ross Pearson. But um, don't be surprised if Seaver uh, can uh, pull this win out, especially if he does land that spinning back kick. Moving on to another what should be entertaining slugfest. Nate Corey, Jorge Rivera. Um, another fight where two guys is probably going to stand and just slug it out on the feet. Um, that's their styles, you know. Nate Corey, aside from the Caleb Starnes fight, which wasn't his fault at all, um, I can't really remember ever seeing him in a boring fight. Jorge Rivera is a guy who likes to stand and trade as well. Um, I give Rivera a little bit of an edge on the feet because he has a good Muay Thai, but um, I don't know. This is almost this is basically a 50-50 fight in my opinion. I'm going to go with Nate. Um, he is vulnerable. He does get hit a lot, but he's just a tough dude. He always seems to weather the storm for the most part and just end up winning a war of attrition. And that's what I think this fight's going to be. Not to say he's tougher than Jorge Rivera, but um, I don't know. I just see him getting the better of it in the end. I don't know if it's going to be a late TKO or a decision. One or the other, that's the way I look. That's the way I see it. But um, either way, I'm going to go with Nate Corey to pull this fight out. But um, once again, we'll not be surprised in any, by any stretch if uh, Jorge Rivera wins this fight. Roy Nelson versus Stefan Struve. Another Ultimate Fighter winner. Last season of the heavyweights, Roy Nelson. Big country. Um, looked good on that show. Granted, his opposition was not nearly the caliber of the fighter that he was. Stefan Struve looked pretty good in his last fight against Paul Buentello. Both these guys, strengths are on the ground. They can both stand and trade on the feet. They're all right there, but that's not where they're, you know, best at. Um, Struve's obviously got a huge height and reach advantage. You know, I think if he uses that on the feet, especially with the kicks, to try to keep Nelson at a distance, he can have some success there. Nelson's got much heavier hands. 
CRISPR um, boxing. So, I don't know. If Stroop can keep him on the outside, I think he can get the better of it. But I don't think Nelson's going to really want to deal with that too much. I think he'll want to either press him up against the cage and work him over there standing, or just take him down and work him on the ground. Um, Nelson's got a really good ground game. Stroop's got pretty good jiu-jitsu himself. So, I don't know if Nelson will necessarily be able to submit Stroop. But I do think he could beat him up there for three rounds. So, bottom line, at the end of the day, I do think Nelson's going to win this fight. Not going to say by submission. Um, could stop him on the ground. You know, Stroop's been cut pretty bad before with um, forearms, elbows, or whatever. So, I could see a cut from the top. But, ultimately, I'm just going to go with Roy Nelson by decision. Main event, Kenny Kenflow flooring against Takanori, Fireball Kid Gomi. Um... Even though he's not really a kid anymore, but hey, I guess it was an appropriate nickname at the time. It's kind of cool. Uh, anyways, uh, if this fight were happening a few years ago, even maybe two or three years ago, I'd pick Gomi. You know, back then he was one of the best lightweights in the world. Um, but uh, since then, he has digressed. Kenny Florian has improved immensely. And, you know, they're just at different stages of their career. Kenny Florian... Um, his style has gotten a little different lately. I don't know. It depends on who he's fighting. Against Huerta, he fought a counter fighting style, similar to Lyoto and Cheetah. But in his last fight, and it made for a boring fight, even though it was an impressive win by Kenny. But in his last fight, he looked pretty damn good against uh, Clay Guida. Um, definitely has improved a, a tremendous amount on his stand-up game. Gomi, he hasn't really looked all that good in a long time. Um, he's kind of been trading wins and losses back and forth. Last couple of years, even his wins haven't been all that impressive in all honesty. On the feet, I think Gomi's got better boxing. I think he has heavier hands. But I think Kenny is more well-rounded with his movie time and his improving boxing. So if it remains on the feet, especially with Kenny also working that counter style, as opposed to Gomi, who's more of an aggressive guy, I could see Kenny getting the better of it. I do think Gomi's best chance is on the feet, but um, I don't know. It's just hard for me to pick him. On the ground, I think Florian's got a huge advantage. Gomi's a better wrestler of the two, but Kenny Florian's got really good jujitsu. Um, Gomi's submission to events is pretty good for the most part, aside from the first Marcus Aurelio fight. Um, but I think if Kenny can get him down there, I think he could hustle him on the ground and probably submit him, maybe with a rear naked choke or something. It'll actually be interesting to see how this fight plays out, you know. But um, I just I can't pick Gomi, you know. He's just not the same fighter he was when he had his run in the Pride Bushido series and stuff and the Lightweight Grand Prix. Unfortunately, he's not, but um, it's the case, man. His prime is definitely behind him. Will he have one last, uh, you know, big moment? I always uh, think that's going to happen for these Pride guys in the UFC, but uh, it's few and far between. And I don't see it happening here for Gomi, so got to go with Kenny Kempflo Florian. Um, I'm going to go with the submission. Gomi hasn't had to cut down weight in a while. I don't know how good his cardio is going to hold up. Plus, it's the first time in the UFC and in the cage. Just too many factors going against him. I think he's going to gas out late. I think Kenny's going to get him on the ground. I see Kenny winning by rear naked choke in the third round. Um, I probably won't be back the next day to talk about these fights. Unless they're really, really impressive and just dynamic. Because that really stands out. But um, that's pretty much it. Looking forward to the show, though. The fights, the show, and all that. Let me know what you guys think you know what your opinions are on the fights of the show in general ultimate fighter um aside from that be sure to check out the website so it will be bloodfightshow.com leave it in the ring.com and my twitter if you're interested links in the information part as always that's it for now till next time i'm out of here later